Next, we'll quickly mention this, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. Hilarious, because it just shows the lengths people will do for their D-R-U-G-S. And this is a story featuring young fucks. So free young fuck, first of all. free big slime. Hopefully, he's able to get out off of that case. And, you know, the allegations against him are hopefully not true. And if they are true, free that man regardless. Free that man regardless. But this is quite a crazy story, according to the Daily Mail. It says the following. Rapper Young Fug is accused of doing a drug deal in court as he faces 20 years in prison um, for being part of the street gang Young Slime Life. It says an astonishing video footage captured at the moment. Troubled rapper Young Fug allegedly concocted a drug deal in court while sitting just feet away from the prosecutor. The star is seated next to the attorney when his co-defendant Khalif Adams walks over, drops something into his hand in a dramatic courtroom surveillance footage obtained by WSB TV. Prosecutors claim the two exchanged Percocet pill in a motion filed by Fulton County Atlanta. Are you absolutely kidding me? This is the video of the actual um, exchange itself. Let's play it. I think it's coming up now. I think this guy may have been searched. Yes, yeah, so if someone gets up now. I think they dropped something on the floor, right? Is it now? That's him, yeah. yeah. There you go. Drop something, right? <laughs> oh my god absolutely crazy absolutely crazy it continues um it says young fuggers real name is jeffrey lamar williams is facing 62 charges relating to the participation in the criminal street gang young son life a convicted of grammy award-winning um, this is america rapper will be jailed for up to 20 years bailiffs were standing close by as they watched the drug deal unfold and quickly swooped in the deputies then searched Adams, who was already serving life without parole sentence for murder, and found him in possession of a Percocet, marijuana, and tobacco wrapped in plastic and food seasoning to conceal the odor. Percocet is a Schedule 11 opiate, but it's still not illegal, so, you know, it's hard, I guess, to convict this sort of stuff. A photo is reported to have taken Adams to a nearby Grady hospital after he appeared to ingest other items of contraband he had on him. Jury selection has paused on Wednesday as a result of the deal. Um, a motion that the court read defendant Adams who is currently serving life without parole sentence for murder conducted a hand to hand drug transaction with defendant Jeffrey Williams in open court but Adams attorney dismissed the allegations in a statement to Atlanta Journal he said these allegations are simply that mere statements made by the state in an effort to thwart the length of the jury section process Miss Adams adamantly maintains innocence and looks forward to conclusion of his day in trial um, Keith Williams attorney of Williams said the state's motion to repeal um, the factual inaccuracies and embellishments and attempts to make Williams responsible for someone else's actions. The end result of the investigation to win, into Wednesday's actions was that Williams was not engaged in any wrongdoing. The trial of Williams and 13 others expected to last until six to nine months. The gang faces charge of racketeering conspiracy to participate in criminal street activity as well as activity of a drug and gun charges. Jurisdiction was paused on Wednesday shortly after alleged contraband handoff. It comes as the trial has already been plunged into chaos by the laser jury selection, blah, 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 blah. So this got me thinking in general about the the kind of lengths I've gone to secure the, the drugs when I've been out and stuff. And for me in general, I think one of the really saving graces of my life, I think overall, is the fact that coming up, I never really was exposed to kind of drugs and alcohol until very late in my life. And I think that's really been a saving grace. And I have to thank my parents for taking me to church when I was really young. I went to church from like the ages of like, you know, zero um, by force all the way until maybe 18, 21 ish. Right. Those all those years are spent every single weekend was spent in church so there was no time to go to clubs there's no time to go to bars there's no time to go to festivals it was all church 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 and when it came to the summertime um there'd be like you know summer events like fest there'd be something like conferences and there'd be like kind of youth events i'd go to and then there was a period of time where i was the unofficial photographer for the people that we used to hang around in church so people used to like look forward to me coming because i take all pictures of them and all this sort of nonsense so there was always 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 church was the kind of you know um underlying factor that kind of defined most of my social goings out and whatnot so when it came to drugs and alcohol 
I was only exposed to it really late when I then decided to pull away from church and decided to live a somewhat secular life, you know, a life of debauchery and excess and greed and whatnot and wanton behavior. That's when I suddenly started drinking and whatever. And I think I mentioned it beforehand, like my first drink was probably had, you know, cronily and cheesy and lamey enough the first drink I probably had was at a private view or like a, like a flipping pirate, sorry, uh, protein studio type event where some company doing some activation for some bullshit drink that no one cares about or some new product that no one's going to buy or brand activation for Nike, Umbra, Reebok, Adidas, whatever. That was probably one of the first times I ever had alcohol in my entire life where they were giving out free red stripes and whatnot. Back in that, they said, well, usually it would be free red stripes or Kynikens and whatnot. And then you'd just be down in them and getting absolutely lit. And those are the times I'd probably get drunk the first few times. And then when it came to drugs, that usually started a couple of years maybe after the fact when I started to get into like, you know, dance music and electronic music, when I started DJing, when I started going to techno parties and traveling and whatnot. Then suddenly the whole drug idea about it was really interesting. But then also the drug part of it for me kind of tied into how miserable i was growing up for a period of time because i just wasn't doing the things i wanted to do and maybe home life was a mess, bit messed up i wanted to kind of you know um, unplug from regular society and the best way to do it was to get super hammered get super high so that you wouldn't kind of remember what is going on in your day to day so you kind of forget about it and it's kind of a horrible way to kind of deal with issues of course but that's something that i kind of did on the regular but in the moment my life started to get I started to get my life back under some level of control. I started to do the things that I was enjoying. I started to pursue maybe a bit of a career, a bit of a passion. Suddenly the need to have those extracurricular things happen on the weekends and whatnot wasn't that important anymore. And even more so when I moved out and I started living by myself, it was more so a thing of like, now I have the opportunity to drink and do drugs as much as I want. And I'm not doing it as much as I was doing it back then because back then it was like a naughty thing that I couldn't do. And I was at home all the time, blah, 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 blah. So for me, there's never been a point in time where I could ever come to this point of addiction or necessity or need where I'd be wanting to do a drug during open court whilst I'm facing 20 years. It's not something I'd even think about. It wouldn't come in my head because I've got so much going on. Um, uh, so um, I've, I had, you know, I didn't have the experience of, you know, having a, you know, having a drug addiction in that same form or form or having a dependency. And also... I never really cared that much. It was never that important. Like, for instance, there'll be times where I'd go out and I wouldn't have gear and I'd be uh, bummed about it. But it wouldn't mean I wouldn't go out. I'd still go out, but it wouldn't be maybe as fun as I would want it to be. Whereas I know some people would be like, hey, if I don't have the gear, I'm not going anywhere. I just kind of suck off the whole night. It was never that serious. And most of it was just kind of me trying to escape from my day-to-day reality. In the moment my day-to-day reality improved, suddenly the drug needing wasn't that important. But I do remember there being some times, you know, where you've done some unthinkable things. Like I remember one time in life when we were obsessed or I was obsessed with flipping doing MDMA all the time every weekend. And it was horrible. Imagine, I can't, now the smell and the taste of it makes me bath and I want to vomit. But back then I'd, I'd, I'd kind of run through three and a half grams on my own on the weekend. And if anyone knows anything about MDMA, you'll know that, you know, it's got a lot of highs. But when you come crashing down on a Monday or the Tuesday, that, that kind of temporary depression is real and you feel so horrible. I remember one time kind of texting my friend at the time and asking him, like, what the fuck's going on, man? I feel so down. I feel so low. I feel so there's no, I was like on a real nihilist, black pill type of mood. I feel like there's no point to life and whatnot. We're wasting our time, all this stuff. Like, we should all just hurry up and die. Like, having some really dark thoughts. <laughs> I don't know, my mate just saying something so matter-of-factly that kind of just opened it up to me. He's like, yeah, mate, I'm not surprised. You're flipping, running through, you know, an ounce of flipping um, MD every weekend. What do you expect? I was like, oh. And I straight away went to Google, typed it in, you know, side effects of MDMA. You realize, oh, that dopamine hit doesn't just go all the way up. It goes down too. I was like, ah. And then I realized that was happening. And then soon after, I kind of stopped doing that altogether. I haven't done it, I don't think, seriously, many, 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 many years. If anything, I'd probably prefer doing a pill over doing a flipping bag of MDMA and having that in my hand and dabbing my finger all day long or pouring in a drink. Like, that's absolutely long. But I remember I used to do it so often. Anyone that knows me back in that day would know I'd be handing out MDMA for like a flipping, like flipping seat, like, like Santa Claus. You know what I mean, that's how bad it was getting. And then, of course, in those periods of time, well, this will be a time where I'll be out. Nowadays, I can't even fathom it. But I remember back then, it'll be around the times when you'd be out and about. And for some reason, you'd be in a club. And, you know, whatever reason people are smashing their high, they might drop something. And someone will drop something on the floor. 
and sometimes you'd use it in the same way how back in the day we'd sometimes do the thing called what well, they i think they called it like land mining or something where you'd go around pubs and whatnot and you'd see somebody's left a drink that they forgot about and you kind of drink it because at that time you were a broke sort of like art student you know struggling to get by but you still went to get drunk and lit so you'd kind of be picking up drunks so i just let let's buy it but you know the, the you never know what it was in there it could be urine it could be apple juice it could be anything but you do that and I remember there was a time too that you'd pick up drugs on the floor. Imagine how risky, dumb and idiotic that is to do drugs that somebody drops on the floor that you have no idea what they are and you do them and just kind of hope for the best kind of in a pure Joey Diaz type of way. And I remember doing that often. And again, then I remember doing it because I was in my haze of like, you know, going crazy. But now that I'm older and I have things going on and I've access to stuff that I can get whenever I want it, it would never cross my mind in the slightest. Ever, 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 ever cross my mind to ever do that. But I remember doing it before and being really, really lit. Uh, but yeah, what an amazing, what an amazing, scary time that was. But I am thankful, like I said prior, that I had that experience in church because I feel like it really did save me. So I feel like if I started early, like these other guys or like most people do, you know, who maybe do their first line when they're 13, their first pill when they're 12 or something, their first drink when they're 15. And, you know, you guys have a lot of, I respect you guys more that you, if you decide to quit or to kind of pull it back because you got addicted to it so young. You know what I mean? And then to kind of pull away from that and not be interested in it later on in life is pretty difficult. But I was, I think, lucky in that I started it quite late in life. And also, not even just church, it was also sports because at that time too, I was skating a lot. I was playing a lot of football and not football just by myself. Like football I was part of a team where people depended on me. So you had to go to training, you had to turn up for matches on Sunday. So you couldn't go too crazy. I had these, always had these rail guards in my life, whether it was church or football or friends and stuff that kind of didn't allow me to go over, the, over you know, too crazy because I had to turn up somewhere. I had to go to church on Sunday, Sunday football. I had to go play football at the cage. All these things were kind of around. I went to go to a skate park thing, whatever. Maybe there was a demo happening or just kind of, you know, a uh, private view, whatever. You want to be on your P's and Q's because you never know who you might bump into. All those things kind of played into my mind or things that were kind of keeping in place there that was kind of making sure that I wasn't going so crazy. But again, I feel like my side of things is far easier than the person, you know, I remember one time going to a house party and bumping into some really cool dudes who actually, I'm actually still, you know, social media friends with some kids from Scotland who were telling me about how crazy the drugs are up there and it made a lot of sense because they're basically saying hey like you know where we are from in scotland it's a really small town and not a lot of people but most of the kids over there when they reach 18 to 21 the first thing they do is move to a bigger city whether it's london or anywhere else in the middle of you know in the north of flipping england but one thing they will do a lot of those kids in those small towns in scotland was do drugs because there was legitimately nothing to do in their area they couldn't drink they couldn't go to most establishments so they basically were just you know reclined to doing drugs in you know abandoned buildings or outside in parks or in people's houses whoever had a cool mum and my people hanging out but they were starting them super easy super early so i remember one kid telling me at that house party saying that you know i think it's from scotland oh they started doing pills and like pingers when they were like you know under the age of 15 legit under the age of 15 so i remember him saying his tolerance was super high like he could do four and not feel not feel a thing and I was thinking, wow, that would be scary if that would be me. So if anything, I respect and honor that person more because they started earlier and they still have a healthy relationship with drugs and alcohol or they completely abstain from it later on. Because it does happen, in it? When you start those things so early and then, you know, you're now 21, 22, 23, 24, when everyone's getting excited about going festivals because it's the first time they're allowed out, it can look a bit corny and cheesy because you've already done it. It's like kids who grew up around parents who went to Glastonbury and Boomtown and all these other things when they were younger and stuff and Coachella and, you know, and Burning Man. It's a bit difficult to get super hyped about certain things because you've been around it for so long. Your parents have been doing it. If anything, you probably see it as corny. Imagine that there's kids growing up nowadays who think festivals and going out is corny and lame because their parents do it. Even though their parents are young and cool parents who go to Primavera, who go to Boom, Boomtown, like I mentioned, you go to all these kind of really cool festivals but because the kids have seen their parents do it and seen them come back monged out you know flipping with uh, cds for eyes and stuff they're like yeah, i'm never going to be that person so it kind of you know puts them off but for me i had a little deliance about it it went the way it went it was okay for a period of time i left it i've appeared if i can mention also was um 
there was a period in time where, again, looking back on it, it might sound strange, but there was a period in time where I was really friendly with this particular drug dealer that used to hang out with us, and we'd go and pick up drugs from him directly at his house. That's how much he liked us as friends, because he used to hang out with us in our social group, but he just kind of pay him for the gear. And, you know, he'd go into his house, and he'd literally have, like, bricks of this stuff in there, in his bedroom. And it kind of looked like stuff that you'd see in maybe narcos and stuff, and you'd be breaking off, you weighing on the scale and whatnot. And it was just really, really cool about it. And it was really funny, really odd to kind of think about that being a thing of like, you would go to his house and pick up stuff and just be casual about it and just be whatever before you'd go out. And that'd be like a constant thing you'd do. But you didn't know that you were actually going to a trap house. At the time, it's, all, it's just his house. Like, no, this is a trap house. Like many illicit and horrible things have happened in, uh, in these four walls. But you're just trying not to think about it because you want to get off and do your thing when it comes to the weekend. And then by the time I'll get the bag, you'd be burning a hole in your pocket before you get to the station. You don't want to take it before you arrive and go to your friends. You won't be on the same kind of high. Absolutely crazy. But those are the only times I can remember it. But then after a period of time when I started making more money and I started to kind of have a little bit more going on in life the necessity to get super black town to get super drunk all the time and to get super high kind of faded and then you know it kind of became like a whenever situation whenever it happens it happens sort of thing and also the access to it kind of improved especially with stuff like darkening and all this sort of stuff happened it kind of made the access to it easier and for me i felt like maybe you guys are different but i felt like like i, f- I felt like my consumption of like chicken and chips was super high back in the day when uber and just eat and stuff didn't exist or delivery didn't exist when i used to live in ed and i'd have five pound burning hole in my pocket and i was a little bit hungry the first thing i do is walk three minutes outside of my house because you know especially growing up in canning town custom house the only thing in that area that there is was flipping betting shops and chicken shops that's it betting shops and chicken shops are the only things you know in those kind of you know uh, deprived working class poverty stricken areas so there'd always be a chicken shop within like a stone's throw of you so the first thing you do is just go and buy chicken chips whenever you felt any pang of hunger or your belly rumbling. But then as soon as Deliveroo and Uber Eats came about, I have access to thousands and thousands of restaurants with all sorts of food and I hardly use it. Maybe on a weekend here and there, but it's not something I run to every time I'm hungry. I'd rather sometimes make something at home. Like, I like, don't want to waste the money on delivery. I mean, it kind of, it's a bit, it works counterintuitively for me in that way. Same thing when it comes to drugs. At the moment, drugs became readily available on Darknet and I can order it whenever I want, suddenly I stopped doing it as much because it's there all the time and there's no rush. Do you know what I mean? It kind of took away the onus of it. So I can't imagine what it must be like to be on the other side of things where you're needing it that much that you're willing to do an open drug deal in court while you're facing 20 years. And also on the back of it, think of it too, when Young Fug is in this situation, I actually think, looking at the pictures of him being in court, he looks the healthiest he's ever looked in a very long time. And you only have to look at some old videos of him. I was checking a recent video. Um, so it went kind of viral again on, on social media of him interviewing with Tim Westwood for the first time. And I think it was when he was here for wireless, I think I'm going to say. Maybe he was here for wireless. And Tim Westwood is interviewing him in his trailer. And he looks really cracked out. Like, you don't realize how dope fiendy and skitty and skittish young fuck look back in the day until you watch the videos interviews of him back in the day same with little baby how he used to talk how he used to carry himself like he looked so strung out but you know at that time it just seemed like you know young fuck eccentric you know character a bit different a bit out of the box but now if anything he looks far more healthy far more clean but imagine you know he's probably been a long-term drug addict for a really long time for, you know for you know for the most of his life and then he's actually every single everything he's been spending and you know a long period of time sitting down in jail without any of those things so the first thing he wants to do is obviously to get lit and get high but i can't ever imagine you know risking adding more time to my sentence and doing stuff like that in open court the only thing he's obviously okay with is the fact that an opioid isn't illegal obviously you know it is what it is what he's doing in court but it's not like a class a substance so he's not obviously that crazy do something like that but i just thought that story was absolutely crazy and regardless and i'm happy that I never had that relationship with drugs and it wasn't something that kind of gripped or followed me in that way, shape or form. I'm really, 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 really fortunate. I've got to be honest, I'm really fortunate.